Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, we're going to show you two ways to connect an XLR microphone to your computer. We film videos like this all the time, so if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Now before I show you how to connect an XLR microphone to your computer, I'm going to show you the three microphones that we're going to use to show you the differences between the two options that we're going to show you for how to connect your XLR microphone to a computer. So for both options that we're going to show you, we'll use a Shure SM58 dynamic vocal microphone. This is quite possibly the most popular microphone in the world. The next microphone we're going to use is a Shure SM7B. This is extremely popular in home recording, studio recording, and podcast, but it has a notoriously high gain requirement. So we're going to show you how that sounds with the two examples coming up. The last microphone that we're going to use is this wide diaphragm condenser microphone. Now it's important to note that condenser microphones require 48 volts of phantom power. Now only one of the options that we show you in this video is capable of sending 48 volts of phantom power to activate a condenser microphone. So the first option that we're going to use to connect an XLR microphone to our computer is this USB to XLR adapter cable. Now this cable has a built-in A to D converter and it comes with about 20 decibels of boosted gain. Now for everything that you see in this video, we have links in the description if you want to get into the specs or if you want to see pricing or where to buy these items. Now we're going to connect this cable to our MacBook, but our MacBook has USB-C, so we're going to use this USB-C to USB adapter. Then we're going to plug in this USB for this USB to XLR cable, and you're going to see here that the light turned on, which means that it's connected to the computer and it has the power that it needs. Next, we're going to connect the Shure SM58 microphone. Now once this microphone's connected, we're going to open our system preferences. We're going to open up the sound settings, and we're going to select the USB audio device. That's the USB to XLR adapter cable that we just plugged in. We're going to start with the volume around 50%. So this is how the Shure SM58 sounds with the XLR to USB adapter. Now, for I think what I would want to do, I'd want to make sure that I could have an input level somewhere around here, anywhere between 60 to 80%. It's about the window that we're aiming for, so we'll slide this slider until we're getting that level. I think this is getting pretty close to what we'd look for if we're trying to record or connect this XLR microphone to this computer. The next, I'll show you the Shure SM7B. This is the Shure SM7B. So you can see here our input volume is all the way up and we're seeing about 40% of an input level. I would like to see this a little bit more even if I get right up on the microphone here. We're only getting about 50% of the input level, not even 50%, just below 50%. But again, this microphone does have a notoriously high gain requirement, but in my mind, this XLR to USB adapter isn't quite giving it the power that it needs to really get up to that proper input level that we would be looking for. Now I'm going to show you that when I connect this AKG wide diaphragm condenser microphone, you'll see here that when I speak into this microphone, there is no input level whatsoever. This thing does not have phantom power with this solution, so the mic does not activate. But this USB to XLR cable uh, is uh, quite a bit less expensive than the next option. The next option I'm going to show you is a USB audio interface. There are many, many different types of USB audio interfaces, but they start at about 10 times the cost of the previous example that we showed you. With the USB audio interface, you can send and receive from your laptop. So you get two XLR jacks. These are typically combi jacks. You can use XLR cable or a quarter inch cable. You get volume or gain for each input. You get a master volume. And on the back, you get a headphone jack and connection for studio monitors. So if you're doing studio monitoring, uh, this interface will handle it all for you. Now on the back as well, there's a USB slot. So that's how we're going to connect to this laptop. So on the back of the device here, you can see the USB 2.0 uh, slot there. So we're going to connect this cable. And this cable goes from there to USB-C. So that'll go straight into the laptop that we're using today. And when we turn this device around, you'll see that it has 
uh, power right away. It gets all the power that it needs from the USB cable, so you don't need external power or anything like that. Next, we're going to connect our XLR cable to the front of this box into the first input, and then we're going to connect it to our Shure SM58. Now you can see on our computer here, we have this uh, audio box 22 VSL is showing up, so make sure that that's selected. The volume will be at 100% by default. Some USB audio interfaces will lock this out so you can't slide it. And then we use the volume on the USB interface itself to control your input volume to the computer. So we'll start with this up around 50%. We'll see if this, we can make this work. We'll turn it up. So right now, our input volume on the Personas USB audio interface is at about the 2 o'clock position. And I think that's giving us the level that we want, somewhere between that 60 and 80%, depending on how close we are to the microphone and how loud we're speaking. That's really the goal of what we're looking for here. Uh, so now I'm going to show you the Shure SM7B. With the Shure SM7B, we need to turn up the volume a little bit more, but we're definitely able to get into that 60 to 80% range that we would be looking for with a microphone like this. This is definitely a lot more gain and a lot more volume than the previous option was able to get us. Now we plug in the AKG C3000B. Now one thing to note, before we turn the volume up, we do need to turn on this phantom power switch on the USB audio interface, and then we'll bring this up. Check, check. Now we'll see that for the first time in this video, we're able to get this condenser microphone to work. Uh, I think we got enough volume out of it for sure by using it at about the one o'clock or 130 position on the USB audio interface and we're able to use this microphone with our computer now which is great because previously we could not connect a condenser microphone to our computer. So there's the two options that we recommend for connecting your XLR microphone to your computer. As we saw here with the USB to XLR adapter cable, it did pretty well with the Shure SM58. So we can assume that it will do pretty well with almost any dynamic handheld vocal microphone that is similar to the Shure SM58. Now with the Shure SM7B, the USB audio interface was able to get it a lot more gain and get that input level up to where we were trying to get it. Also with the USB audio interface, it has the built-in phantom power that activated our condenser microphone. I think there's just more value of getting a USB audio interface, even if you end up having to buy used to find something that fits your budget. Now we have links to everything that you've seen here in the description below, so if you want to see what each one of these would cost, or if you want to do some research, please be sure to check out those links. If this video was helpful for you, please let me know in the comment section or give it a big like. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.